You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. ha Thank God I'm a country boy. Or no, I'm a country girl. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Hey there. Hi there. Ho there, everybody. And howdy. This is Grammy Mary, and I am here in my rocket chair. I finally made it to the rocket chair. I uh, got a little bit delayed because I had a call for help, an SOS. <laughs> Save our souls. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I am. Um, oh, last year I hooked up with me a farmer. <laughs> Flasher already knew, but yeah. Uh, I hooked up with a farmer, and bless his heart, he's a country boy, all right. He gives directions like... Remember where that cow used to stand at the corner? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, well, he broke down. He was driving a Ford, which basically means fix or repair daily, found on road dead, all of those lovely little euphemisms, and I had to go get him out in the middle of the Badlands. <laughs> But more about that later. Let me say hey to everybody, shall we? Yeah, you're listening in on the Spreaker channel, the RLM Spreaker channel, or RLMRadio.xyz. Um, let's see. Yeah, um, Spreaker, uh, RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 3. Um, yeah, all kind of other places. FullertonInformer.com. What is that? I've been, I've been catching up on links real quick. Cause I've been busy. I've been playing out in the yard and all kind of stuff. And yeah. Um. Oh wow. Hmm. Apple six six six. Hmm. Okay. So over here on Twitter, thank you ever so much, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, yeehaw, it's been a day. <laughs> I'm so glad it's Friday. Although that really don't make a damn bit of difference when uh, you're out here in the country and you work for yourself. But, um, yay. <laughs> so, hi there, everybody over on Twitter. I gained another stalker. Yay, yay. Over here on Fakey Book, I see the lovely little Miri B is here, as well as, let me see, Nelson. Hi, Nelson. How you doing, hon? And uh, over on this FN site, thank you once again, Grimner, for sharing me over there on that FN site and letting people know that I was going to be an hour late because I was on a mission of mercy. <laughs> and I told him, I'm going to give him shit. Oh, my God. And he wanted me to come get him in his pickup, and he had less than a quarter tank. And, excuse me, diesel pickup. Less than a quarter tank, 65-mile round trip. No. <laughs> Especially not with the directions I was given. No. So I took my car. My car got, got to go Booneyville traveling. Boonier than where I live. And let me tell you, that's saying something. But, okay, over here on Mines. Hi there, everybody over on Mines. How are you doing? Hope you're having a splendiferous day. Um, I don't know if anybody's really paying attention, but that's okay. You don't have to. I'm still talking because that's what I do. And let's see. If you wish to give me static, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Join the chat. Make up a nickname. Give me some shit. And I'll give it right back. But when I give it to you, it will be organic fertilizer. <laughs> I'm going to have fun with this. Oh, man, he is going to get so much static. Oh, Lord. Okay. I got to do the reallibertymedia.com thing on this Twitter thing so people know to join the chat there. Mm. In I'm doing this on Twitter, by the way. Mm. 
let's say join the chat. Oops. I suppose punctuation is key. Yeah, it's like going to help your Uncle Jack off of the donkey or going to help your Uncle Jack off the donkey. <laughs> punctuation is key. So, in any case, what? Ooh, media may contain sensitive material. Ooh, wow. How unusual. Okay, over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static. Right up top, I see Grimner. Do it. Is Barman there? Yes, Barman is there. Hi, Barman. I see you, sweetheart. I saw that you dropped out earlier, but you must be back. Also, closely following Barman is Beer... Beer... <laughs> See what happens when I go out in the boonies? Holy crap. Hi, Grim. <laughs> Grimner's the RLM god, and I better not mess with him too awful much, because, yeah, he is the god, don't you know? Hi, Moosey. Grimner and Moose will be on later on this evening, actually an hour after I finish up here on the RL&M with the Freaker's Ball, so be sure to stick around for that. It's always a good time. Also, the lovely Kate is in the house. Hey, Kate. How you doing? And Asmo. Hi, Asmo. And the lovely Beth Z. Has Beth chatted lately? I haven't seen her, but, you know, that doesn't say a whole hell of a lot because I've been kind of far afield myself. Um, Chelsea Denis is here. Got the O kicked out again. Damn it. Got the O clean kicked out of you. And Cycles. Hi, Cycle. How you doing, sweetie? Chloe with the double E is here. Oh, Chloe, thank you ever so much for that video earlier today. That was really pretty darn cute. Hmm. Free Enslaved is here. But Free Enslaved is marked away, so I can't tell him that this is a rerun. I'm here. I made it, finally, after my intrepid explorer expedition kind of thing. <clears throat> and I wasn't even in the rocket chair. Don, I be Don C is here as well as the Woke version. Damn, you're working too hard, hon. I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house as well as JJ's from Scotland. Hey, JJ's. I also see Juana Taco. Hey, Juana. And Meister Bra. Hi, Woody. The lovely rain is in the house. I'm hoping that all this damn wind will blow some rain in, but... I don't know if we can be that lucky. RLM Flukey, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, is here. Hey, Fluke. And Rob Works, thank you, dude, for firing up the bubble. Yeah, Farmer Grams. Yeah, you should see me in my bibbies. <laughs> oh, I also see Trust No One is in the house. Hey, you trusty feller, you. Woodman. Holy smokes, we got a Meister Bra and a Woodman. I also see Averse. Hello, Averse. Pleasure to meet you. You may not think the same of me, but that's okay. Because you know what? I, I'm really, there's very few people in this world that I truly, 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 not to be a no, an obnoxious turd or anything like that, but there's very few people in this world that their opinion truly matters. Very few. And so, you know, the rest of you are like, oh, I like you, I love you, but don't piss me off. Because I'll still love you, but I may not like you anymore. <laughs> and you'll know it. <laughs> I also see Colfax 101. Hey, you there, Ninson Dubois. And looky there, Dakota. And Dima. And Frumpy, 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 Frumpy. Gooberzilla is also in the house. Honey, where's your spaceship? I want to see it. I've seen a few things, unidentified flying objects out here in the boonies. Because, you know, you don't have that much city lighting to affect what's going on. And so you can see a lot more stuff in the sky. Hi, Kozu. I see you. I also see KD Troxel is here. Hey, KD. And the lovely Miri B from Down Under just joined in a little bit ago. Hey, B. How's things down in your world? I hope it's not nearly as blustery as it is in mine. I also see Moy, 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 as well as Poxified and Poxy Home. A double pox. Ooh. Hmm. I wonder if that's a good thing or not. Pompa Bon Sauce is in the house, as well as Slim Jim Flim and Teddy the Cuddly One. And rounding out the crew is the one, the only, the Phantom, the intro guy, the one who did that for me. And I truly appreciate it. <coughs> 
I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I do. Need to drink a lot of there, because <clears throat> I'm a bit parched. There's a lot of dust blowing, and a lot of corn husks, and corn stalks, and yeah. I was an intrepid explorer out in the badlands of northwest Kansas. Let me tell you, you know you're in the badlands when um, you go past a place that's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And uh, their entertainment is having rattlesnake roundups. And I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. They do it every year. They have a rattlesnake roundup. And they have a place right close, which is just before you drop off the edge of the earth. <laughs> I could see it from where I went. <laughs> but yeah, me and dirt roads and and all kind of shit blowing at me and wow. It was it was interesting. But I got directions like, okay, you'll know you missed your turn just as you drive past it. That was one of the directions that I got. <laughs> it's a road that goes south when you're going west. <laughs> No, really? I don't know the road number. I just know that I miss it every time I go by it. It's like, oh my God, I'm in trouble. I may not make it to the radio, but I did. <laughs> oh man, he is a sweetheart though. He really is. And he is most definitely a country boy. Bless his heart. And he's not one of those, you know, dumb country bumpkin kind of country boys. I mean, he knows his shit. He's pretty sharp. And although I have introduced him to quite a few things on the Internet that he really wasn't, uh, he is kind of sort of a conspiracy-minded individual. You know, I found out that he had some tinfoil hats as well. <laughs> but I don't think he was prepared for how many tinfoil hats I got. And, uh, yeah, he's... He, gets into some really interesting conversations let me tell you and his kids are absolutely awesome and and they like me and I like them and that's that's very important and his grandchildren are also amazing so pretty darn sweet pretty darn awesome but <clears throat> he's my country bunk and my country boy okay let me see I got two more sweet oh there you go okay I'm going to go ahead and close Twitter after I did some uh, reaping from there. Not raping, reaping, because I found some, some links over there that I thought, oh, wow, I need to get to some of something. I need to have something to do tonight. Because <laughs> usually that couple of hours just prior to the radio, that's when I really start putting stuff in my pocket. You know, especially if I'm busy throughout the day, which I was today. I was out raking with the wind. Out here, you need to know that when the wind is blowing, you rake with the wind so the wind helps you. And so I have four piles of every time the wind changed. <laughs> That's kind of the way it worked out. But I did get a really big section of the yard rake today. so And it's probably going to be half of it blown right back where it was. But eh, job security, right? <clears throat> That's what I think. Okay. So, uh, where do I want to go first? I think, I think, because I do have, I did put a couple of things in my pocket earlier today. Um, let's see. Oh, let's, no, I'll save that one for later. Let's see. Let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. This one is from March 29th of last year, actually. So, yeah, we know. Um, autumn is there. Oh, a nice cool day. It was 82 out here. Or at least that's what my thermometer on the outside of the house said. Hi, free enslaved. Let's see. I see you pop back in again, hon. Okay. So, from naturalnews.com. Scientists have discovered a way to destroy cancer tumors using nothing but sound waves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, they, they're they saying that they've discovered this now, but wasn't there someone like back in the 1920s that had also done that? I can't remember his name. Out there in California. I know it'll come to me at like 2 in the morning, but right now I'm, I'm not 5. Um, mm, 
I'll think of it. I'll think of it. Or someone else in the chat will think of it, and that would be awesome. But from Natural News, <clears throat> a recent breakthrough in high-intensity focused ultrasound therapy, <clears throat> or HIFU, HIFU, oh, that's a fun one, HIFU technology. <laughs> Not to be confused with tofu, because that's that that's that's closely related to toe jam. This is haifu. <clears throat> In any case, it has proven its use as an effective cancer treatment. A multi-institutional research team from China developed a semi-enclosed spherical cavity transducer that can produce a focused standing wave field with a sub-wavelength scale focal region and extremely high ultrasound intensity. The spherical cavity transducer appeared to generate tighter focal regions and greater pressure amplitude compared to the traditional concave spherical transducer. Wow, where's Watts's face from Back to the Future? Hmm. Researchers said that the level of intensity generated by the new transducer design may lead to significant improvements in high food therapy. The findings were published in the Journal of Applied Physics. Now, HIFU is a non-invasive, targeted treatment that makes use of sound waves to eradicate cancer cells. HIFU uses an ultrasonic, <coughs> excuse me, transducer to convert electrical signals into sound waves, then concentrates ultrasound into the small focal region to raise the temperature to more than 65 degrees Celsius, thereby killing cancer cells in the process without inducing damage to the surrounding tissue. Booyah! You know, I've heard that if you inject hydrogen peroxide into a tumor, that will also kill it. Hmm, although that's invasive, whereas this is not. Uh, the technique works in the same manner as focusing sunlight through a lens, which helps eliminate the disease-causing cells. HIFU can be used as an alternative to traditional cancer treatments such as chemotherapy and surgery, and I think it should be. It can't be nearly as invasive or nasty as those two are. Now, sound waves proved to be viable cancer treatments in various studies, the uh, high-intensity focused ultrasound therapy proved to be a highly effective cancer treatment. For instance, researchers in the University College Hospital in London examined 625 men with prostate cancer and found that 93% of patients who underwent HIFU alone remained cancer-free at five years following the treatment, <clears throat> which is about 88% um, higher than the rate of those that, if they survived five years, that went through traditional chemo and radiation therapy. Because what they don't tell you is only 5%, they have a 5% success rate with chemo and radiation. And so why do they keep doing it? Because it's so lucrative, that's why. Yeah, this is also without requiring surgery or radiotherapy, which is radiation treatment. Data also showed that only 1-2% to 2 of patients who had HIFU treatment suffered long-term urinary incontinence compared to 10-20% to 20 of patients who had surgery. In addition, only 15% of the patients in the HIFU group developed erectile dysfunction compared with 30-60% of surgical patients. So, if you wish to be able to stand at attention, go with the sound waves. The results of this study are impressive and have the potential to transform prostate cancer treatment for many men in the future. It's extremely exciting technology and these results show that in men diagnosed early by prostate specific antigen or PSA blood testing, this targeted therapy could be as effective as surgery to remove the whole prostate gland or radiotherapy to cause far fewer side effects. This is according to the co-author, Tim Dutteridge. The findings were prevented, are presented at an annual meeting of the European Association of Urology in Munich, Germany, and a, a, a British clinical trial funded by the Medical Research Council also found 
that 95% of patients who underwent high food therapy for prostate cancer remained cancer-free for tw at 12 months after the treatment. Researchers also found that none of the respondents suffered urinary incontinence during the follow-up period. Yes? Chloe! I see you, Chloe. Chloe, Chloe. Okay. Um, also, another sound wave innovation to watch out for is uh, researchers at the University of Alberta in Canada have developed a new technique that uses focused sound waves to activate minute particles known as nano droplets. And according to the researchers, the new technique was as accurate as using needles in biopsy. With a little bit of ultrasound energy, nano droplets phase change into micro bubbles. It's important because ultrasound can really oscillate these micro bubbles. The micro bubbles absorb uh, micro bubbles absorb of the ultrasound energy and then act like boxing gloves to pot punch the tumor cells and knock little ves vessels off or vesicles 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 you have vesicles <laughs> wow <laughs> that sounds bad hmm that led us to detect some genes that were in uh, indicative of the aggressiveness of the tumor that's potentially very powerful. You can get a genetic characterization of a tumor, but do it relatively non-invasively. That's according to the engineering professor, Roger Zemp. The findings were published in the journal Cancer Research, and to find more news on these discoveries, go to discoveries.news. So, that's pretty cool. Although, I can't, I gotta... That's going to really bother me until I remember who the heck that was. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well. Moving along. Now that I've found that one, let's go to, after I post this over on, um, over here on the effing site as well. A lot of times, mines doesn't get my blo my posts until... <clears throat> I'm done because, yeah, it takes a bit to uh, get all this stuff figured out and posted. And, and mine's doesn't have the fun little easy emoticons that, that you can do to, uh, okay, and I'm not finding the one I want to use. Okay, I'll just use that one. So. Okay. Oop. Now, do I want to go there? Nope. Let's go to before it's news dot com. And this is for gardening. Yeah, I'm just gonna bounce all over the place again because yeah, it's one of those days. What do you say? Actually, it's pretty much a typical show for me, but <clears throat> it's a pain-free and overlooked technique to bigger garden yield. Ah, and he has lettuce here, and I'm going to try and grow lettuce too out here in, in the very dry area, <laughs> but lettuce is going to be in a container. Okay, so succession planting is a great technique to use in your garden that will provide you with delicious benefits for little extra work. The primary goal of succession planting is to produce more food from your garden by continuously planting crops throughout the growing season. Ah, okay. So, if you're like many of us fellow food growers, maximizing your garden's production is a yearly goal. And the idea behind succession planting is an often overlooked technique. It is to replant another crop immediately after you harvest, sometimes repeating more than once, depending on your climate and the ability to utilize season's extension methods, which, yeah, got to put a green up, greenhouse up out here. Hmm, yeah, because turmeric and ginger, they need a little bit longer growing season than what I have normally. So, 
They will be grown in containers and they will get moved into a greenhouse once it starts getting cold. So, <clears throat> to prepare yourself for a full season of succession planting, it is helpful to sit down in the spring and map out what crops you are planting where and when. And this will serve as a reminder to start new seeds indoors so you always have strong and hardy seedlings on hand. And you need to get non-GMO seeds and most of my seeds, oh man, and anything that does really well um, out here for me, you know, like when I go and I buy my plants, because I always buy like tomato plants and pepper, not this year because I got seeds and I'm going to start seedling this weekend, but um, any plant that does really good for me, then I keep back some seeds of it and then the next year, you know, like with cantaloupe or, um, well, potatoes, you can't do that, but um, cantaloupe, cucumbers, uh, squash, zucchini, um, tomatoes, peppers, whether they be bell peppers or banana peppers or jalapeno peppers or whatever, but um, I always save some seeds back and usually keep them on a little paper towel and once they dry I put them in a little bitty snack Ziploc bag and in the freezer they go after they've been labeled. But um, so yeah this year's going to be fun because I'm going to be planting things from that did well last year. So instead of going and buying plants and that's awesome. But I did find a place which I don't have the catalog handy. <laughs> go figure, where they sell heirloom seeds and they have the history of each seed listed in that catalog. It's really pretty cool. Got, got uh, oh, some purple carrot seeds and some uh, sweet potato seeds. I know, it's weird. Um, and um, lettuce and, oh, I can't remember all of them. I did get a couple new tomato things that I want to see if they will work out here because they're very high in antioxidant and but in any case back to this <clears throat> there are different types of succession planting and you can use these methods in your garden simultaneously now you have the same crop succession planting which uh, refers to re-sowing the same crop at regular intervals throughout the season to ensure that you always have some of the crop to harvest you can do that with onions um, and you know those kind of things onions radishes although you have to be careful out here because radishes get really hot um, but usually this is good for uh, lettuces radishes scallions beets um, let's see and you can do smaller plantings every one to three weeks as opposed to doing larger plantings all at once uh, not only will you enjoy fresher produce from your garden, but you will surely reduce the amount of food waste that your household generates, which it's not really food waste because if it starts to go yuck, then it goes in the compost and then it goes back into the ground the next year. So it's all good. You can do different crop succession planting, which is another type and um, it's very effective in accommodating the changing climate throughout the year. So uh, follow the first cold winter crop with a different species of the plant that thrives in the hot summer and you can then follow this up with another cold weather crop that will hold up in the overwintering. So if you plant accordingly, you can plant the same spot multiple times throughout the year using many different scenarios. Now uh, the example of planting cold weather crops in the spring such as spinach or cold hardy lettuces or peas and uh, under row covers or hoops or cold frames and then you can follow that by quick maturing heat loving crops like beans and radishes and carrots and scallions and summer squash and then follow that with other stuff like kale or leeks that can overwinter. Kind of cool. And you can do intercrop which is one thing I'm going to do this year. Um, I'm going to do a, a, a couple of Three Sisters areas and the Three Sisters areas is to do first you plant your corn and then as it starts coming up then you plant your beans along by the corn and then as the beans start coming up then you put your squash in and um, then the corn will supply 
something for the beans to climb and the squash will help provide ground cover and help hold in moisture and the beans also add nutrients back into the soil so it's a it's a very very good way of, of doing three things in one area all at the same time basically um, so let's see now by starting the seeds um, of your second or third planting you will have strong hardy seedlings ready to go and increase your garden efficiency which I'm gonna go ahead and start seeds uh, like I said this weekend on several things to get put out but they're not going outside until Mother's Day weekend because we always get a freeze right before Mother's Day weekend so I don't ever put my garden out till after Mother's Day so <clears throat> And it's got, my garden's got lots of potash that's been spread out on it, and that needs to get worked in as well this weekend. So it's going to be a busy weekend for me. So each time you harvest and replant, um, be prepared with soil amendments to feed your soil, unless you're doing something that, you know, you can just work it back into the soil, like seedlings that didn't come up and that kind of stuff that does put green it's basically green fertilizer back into the soil that the the next crop will be able to utilize um, you can use organic compost manure glacial rock dust Epsom salt um, or you know if you've got miracle grow and I've got miracle grow but yeah the miracle grow I have I think I'm just gonna put that on the flowers I the more I read about some of this stuff I'll just no. I will make my own compost. I will put potash. I will rotate crops. But no, don't want to use Miracle Grow. Don't trust them. Sorry. So, um, oh, and the more nutrition you feed your soil, the healthier your plants will be and more nutrient dense your food will be. Utilizing nutritious mulch throughout the year will also help retain moisture and nutrients in the soil while greatly reducing those pesky weeds. Although those pesky weeds, if you get them pulled and then you have a compost that you can put them into, yeah, they'll turn into feed for the next year or two years later, depending on how you do your compost bins and all that fun stuff. Lastly, intensive planting in space in your garden with multiple crops in one growing season can take its toll on the soil so follow an intensive following an intensive season with uh, nutritious green manure cover crop which yeah, there's lots of cattle out here I'm sure we can find some of that stuff uh, that will help regenerate the soil and prepare it for the next round of edible production also, rotate your bed of intensive succession plantings to a new place in the garden each year to reduce the stress on the soil and the risk of pests and diseases because, yeah, if you plant a crop the same place every year, you are going to start having problems with that. I mean, it, I, don't, I don't know of a farmer that doesn't or a gardener that gardens on a large scale that doesn't do some kind of rotational planting. So... For those that wish to do any gardening stuff, I don't know how many of you are out there, but you know, you can also do like window box gardening and that kind of stuff too. Oh, good morning, Poxified. Did you have a nice nap? Um, let's see. Non-hybrid seeds, heirloom organic, non-hybrid. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can. Can you give me the catalog for the seeds? I'll look up the catalog that we got a bunch of seeds from. Ah, Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. That's where we got a lot of our seeds. All kinds of way cool. Oh, and on the front they have super sweet atomic grape tomato. And they're freaking awesome looking. Freaking awesome. But yeah, I got some really weird, really weird tomatoes. But, um, and let's see. 
www.rareseeds.com is the website that they have on the outside of the catalog. Um, oh, hey. Oh, hey. Okay. Let me look. Let me look. Because we just got a new catalog because, yeah, ordered it. Yep. www.rareseeds.com All kinds of way cool heirloom seeds with the history behind them and the nutritional value and what people and when you go online and check them out you can also um, see the reviews from people and um, they'll let you know how good they planted in different zones you know they let you know where they're from and how well the seeds did for them and um, if they if they you know different like how they tasted and all that fun stuff. It really is kind of a cool, kind of a cool place. All kinds of way cool. I had no freaking clue. You know, like the Cherokee purple tomatoes that I planted last year. They're funky looking. I mean, they're they're a red and a purple and, and have green stripes in them. But oh my God, they are amazing tasting tomatoes. Amazing. And... Um, they are actually called Cherokee tomato because, yeah, apparently they trace back lineage to like early 1800s. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. But um, very wonderful tomatoes. And they work really well out here where it's hot and dry and crazy ass weather sometimes. So let's. I'll just go ahead and put it in the RLM. I think that's... Yep. www.rareseeds.com Okay. Well, my fluke, you do not like that website? I did spell it right. Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay, moving along. So, let me put this over here for those of you with the green thumb. If you have a brown thumb, just keep trying. Seriously. Because, you know, there may come a time when you need to do an awful lot of producing of your own food. Get started. Even if it's just with little things in like a window box or a pot or something. Grow your own herbs. That's a good way to start. Uh, learn to be self-sufficient. Let's see. I'll do this one. Okay. Now. Um. Hmm. Okay, this is just a little quickie. <laughs> uh, from worldtruth.tv. Um, it's a recording basically from 1967 and it describes events that we see in the news today with shocking accuracy. Everything was pre-planned and they only have one goal. We see the government or of God over the world is hidden. We see the government of God over the world is hidden. What? Francis Bacon wrote in 1605 describing the deepest of deep states. The Lord's reign over us, okay, which Bacon thought um, a good model for earthly rule. Obscure and invisible was how Bacon thought government worked best, and King James I agreed, instructing in 1624 a too inquisitive subject that none shall meddle with anything concerning our government or matters of state. In the United States, the concept of deep state is an alleged entity which coordinates efforts by government employees and others to influence state policy without regard for democratically elected leadership. So, and I don't know if this 50-year-old recording is like the uh, Paul Harvey thing, because I didn't listen to it yet, but... I do think that this has been in the wikes for quite some time. Oh. Thanks, Graham. 
Okay. Oh, that's where you, oh, cool. Yeah, I got some, um, I got some, oh, gosh darn, I don't remember the name of them, but they're uh, brown beans with white spots. You know, they almost look like, uh, what are, not Hereford. Um, I don't know. Damn it. They look like cows, like little cows. <laughs> well, they don't really look like cows, but they look like whatever. Being a farm girl, yeah, I don't remember the name. I just, I saw the seeds and I went, or saw the beans and I went, oh, yeah, yeah. And I think that's where my Auntie Wanda got them, actually, because that's where I got them, was from Auntie Wanda originally. So, yeah. Um... Thank you, Grimmy. Let me put this over here in the effing site as well. So, anyone wishes to peruse that video at their leisure. Now. Okay. I've been dilly-dallying. Now it's time to really get into the fun stuff. This is from ZeroGov.com. And it is from March 18th of this year by Bill. Thanks, Bill. The Education Complex and Imperial Conditioning by Bill Buppert. A is for Abolition of Capitalism. B is for Ban the Pipeline. C is for Collective. I'm not sure she wasn't finished writing that on the chalkboard. So, as Bill says, I've noticed a fascinating phenomenon over my 30 years of teaching. Schools and schooling are increasingly irrelevant to the great enterprises of the planet. No one believes anymore that scientists are trained in science classes or politicians in civics classes or poets in English classes. The truth is that schools don't really teach anything except how to obey orders. Now this is a great mystery to me because thousands of humane, caring people work in schools as teachers and aides and administrators, but the abstract logic of the institution overwhelms their individual contributions. Although teachers do care and do work very, very hard, the institution is psychopathic. Mm-hmm. It has no conscience. It rings a bell, and the young man in the middle of the right or in the middle of writing a poem must close his notebook and move to a different cell where he must memorize that humans and monkeys derive from a common ancestor. That is from John Taylor Gatto dumbing down dumbing us down the hidden curriculum of compulsory education. So, even here in Arizona, our morally stunted um, apparatchik, apparatchik, okay, and their morally stunted governor, fondly known as Il Duce, is proposing a raft of weapon prohibition nonsense. Ah. And it's precious that one of his orc chiefs, Nepir, in Pima County, is spouting the only one's mantra. And here's the qualification for the cop roach to carry his weapon. Oh, now is this something new? I didn't want to go on to a new one. What the hell? That is a new one. I, d I just wanted to do the... Education one. Damn it. See, that's what happens when I don't pre-check. <laughs> oh, well, apparently this uh, cockroach, we'll go on with it. What the hell? I already started. Commission members must qualify annually, at minimum, with a weapon system intended for on-duty use on a department-approved firearms qualification course and must meet all Arizona Peace Officer Standards and Trainings, or AZ POST and firearm qualification requirements. Once a year, for each weapon system used in an official capacity, 
And uh, how many tries do you get? Well, members shall be allowed up to two attempts to qualify on their initial qualification date. In the event of two failures on the initial qualification date, the member shall be rescheduled by PRTC staff to return to the range within five business days for an additional qualification attempt. So, what is it that they get three tries to do? Well, apparently, assuming you're talking handguns, there is a revolver course that you can check out. But, for our purposes, let's assume semi-automatic handguns are the more likely choice which is 50 shots on TQ-9 and TQ-12 targets, apparently. Hmm. They have time stages at 25, uh, 7 rounds, 15, 12 rounds, and 7, um, 19 rounds, and 3, 12 round yards. Ah. So, 25 yards, 15 yards, 7 yards, and 3 yards. Okay. And shooters have to manage their ammunition and perform a few reloading malfunction drills and five points for shots within the designated scoring area, which is the center of the mass or the head, yay, and a minimum of 210 points out of 250 maximum. So basically, they get three chances to get a B, and there's nothing to stop those with in. Uh, with initiative from doing as much practice as they need in advance. Ah, Okay, Zero gov has got several little thingies on here. It just, one just leads right into another, so. It's like, wait a minute here, dude, I thought this was about edgemocraption. And then he goes into real estate, and men are dumb, and yada, yada, yada. What? Wait a minute. Okay. And then it... Okay. Wait a minute here. Apparently, he's tying all three of these together. I'm scrolling, by the way. Um, thank the gods every day that most cockroaches are the poor marksmen that they are. Well, yeah. Pay attention to what you're, um, what is going on around you, and um, let's see. Spontaneous projects, private ownership, firearms, and get a sign. No BB. Okay, and then it goes right into men are born ignorant, not stupid. They are made stupid by education. Ah, that's from Bertrand Russell. Well, there you go. Okay, so apparently this all does tie together. I'm just having a heck of a time trying to see how it ties together. But maybe, just maybe, it will get to that. So, in case you didn't know it, the primary reason the state owns the K through PhD education path happens to be the handy indoctrination of future subjects to be imbecilic, dependent, and devoid of any critical thinking skills. See, I told you, if you scroll far enough, Oh, yeah, those are cool beans. Thanks, Rob. Um, yeah. I'm going to click on that. Yeah, there you go. And uh, I got to see these. I want to see if these, because we did order some beans. I think we did get some of those. Because I think those actually are um, going in um, into the Three Sisters Garden. Which Three Sisters Garden, yeah, corn. And I got two different kinds of corn that we're going to plant. One of them is a popcorn, and the other one is, is uh, corn that I'm going to use for grinding to make my own cornmeal. So, in any case, back to this edgemocraption thing. Um, the other reason is a convenient way to launder hundreds of billions of dollars through the educraption su subsystem in subsidies, loans, and grants. Now, much like the pathetic and deadly Veterans Administration, the system is designed to en enstupidate, what the hell, <laughs> and 
philosophically sedate its clientele. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know of too many kids that aren't just bored spitless after school. I mean, my grandchild that saw fun in everything could not tell me anything fun about school. So, yeah. In the case of edumacraption, to surgically transfer the brain case from the individual to the state. Ah, that is why they do those things. Gatto infers adroitly, in our secular society, school has become the replacement for church. And like church, it requires that its teachings must be taken on faith. Must be. You know, just like the edu or the uh, medical institution, you know, <clears throat> yeah, everything's taken on faith. They don't have science to back up a lot of their crap that they're pushing on us. They have scientism. Yay. Yeah, I'm cranky, cranky now. Well, not really, but I'm gonna be bitchy. So, all status are religionists for whom their idle and focused religious prostrations is the power of the state. Once you ask them to Socratically drill the substance of their assertions, they quickly fall dumb and mute. There is a reason that journalism and teaching are four or five year degree programs that prepare one to simply be a stenographer or spokes parrot for the state. The cherry on the colossal cake is the majority of the workforce is unionized and government supremacist in its orientation. But I put workforce in quotations mark or in quotation marks because the dirty little secret is that teachers work very little throughout the day. Like so many unionized zombies, the return is quite disproportionate to the legend espoused by the usual suspects in the government media education complex, which I do know that some teachers really do work. And some of them have two or three jobs just to make ends meet because teaching doesn't really pay all that well in most school districts. It's those in the administrative levels that make the serious cha-ching. Now, one of those wonderful government contraptions where the more money poured into the system, the worse the performance. Yeah. Mind you, this is from the alien perspective that functioning and manure, or excuse me, functioning and mature. <laughs> Maybe that was a Freudian slip. <clears throat> this is from the alien perspective that functioning and mature human beings are the end product of the indoctrination camps. But alas, the true reason that they exist is imperial conditioning to create lifetime robot serfs for state ambition. The yellow submarine fleet of buses nationwide drains about 15 billion out of the economy. The average cost is approximately 1,000 debt bucks per student per annum. But one must always be suspect of the accuracy of government reporting. Because parents driving their urchins to school or private van pooling would be too hard. My kids walked. The United States spent more than 11000 per elementary student in 2010 and more than 12000 per high school student. When researchers factored in the cost for programs after high school education, such as college or vocational training, the United States spent $15,171 on each young person in the system, more than any other nation covered in the report. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development published findings in 2013 and part of the 440-page tome of statistics put the United States spending on its human zoo animals in context. The sheer dead investment in real estate, physical plants, and sheer administrative expense boggles the mind. 
This lovely gem shows that the U.S. expends over 630 billion with a B every year. This fails to capture one of the all-time greatest scams of big government. The bond. Yeah, those school bonds. Yeah, that you pay and pay and pay and pay on. We recently had a bond vote in Oro Valley, um, Arizona to build sports fields for $17 million, but the total debt would have topped out at $32 million once the assumed debt was satisfied. A mere illustration of the constant bombardment on the annual basis in our local areas where the education hustlers are constantly trying to get the voters to sign on to even more debt. If it weren't for spending on education in America, maybe we would have colonized the solar system by now. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Nobody knows how to waste money like NASA or the U.S. military. Let's put it like that. So, there are now 13,588 school districts in the U.S. All of these districts tend to have more than two schools assigned to their tender mercies. But the sheer scale and mass of the higher education complex in freshman to Ph.D. factories in the U.S. is staggering. Not only are the wrong people attending, there are too many attending, and not only is the wrong curricula, which is a polite term for what passes as advanced uh, pedagogy, according to the data from the Federal Reserve, the total amount of student debt in the United States is now 1.5 trillion with a T. What's probably even more bizarre is that the US government actually owns about 70 percent of these student loans. A total of 1.06 trillion with a T. It owns this debt to float as an asset in what is in thinking fiscal circles a liability. Bottom line is that if you're not a uh, STEM aspirant, or, yeah, aspirant, aspirant, whatever, your college education is worth worse than zero, and the idiotic parents who float the notes for the urchins to attend to get Marxist robot in return with the cognitive skills of an electric eel around C-spine and zero initiative. Yay! That's a very descriptive way of looking at that. One would suppose that the elites would object to having a workforce so intellectually baggered that they can't fix a car, or dial a rotary phone, or show up on time. Yeah, that would be a detriment to the future tax dollars that they can rob from high-income earners but that would be assuming that the elites can think that far ahead. Imperial conditioning has its own curious internal logic to create compliant and weak-minded human hybrids who do what they're told and don't have the sand to oppose their rulers. So, if you send your child to school from preschool nonsense to the university system, you are likely condemning your progeny to a life of crippled intellect, morally corrupt philosophy, indoctrination, and crude brainwashing. In college, they will spend far more time absor absorbing the current milieu of aging communist milksops droning on about the joys of government supremacy or and the uh, efficiency of collectivism and the pro-death mind map that is modern political dialogue in the universities, which is certainly not hetero... Um, Heteroversities? Uh, heteroversities. Ah, okay. The credentialed dons in the academic or in ac academia demand a tolerance for the physical attributes of their rainbow worldview. 
in pigmentation and sex tackle between the legs. Sex tackle between the legs. Hadn't heard of it like that before. Hmm, okay. Oh, although the trans movement is going to make an interesting cat fight with the feminists, which yes, I do think that as well. But it will demand it will demand a monochromatic communist worldview that will make Stalin blush with envy. So, teach your children well. Resist, rinse, repeat. Whatever an education is, it should make you a unique individual, not a conformist. It should furnish you with an original spirit with which to tackle the big challenges. It should allow you to find values which will be your road map through life. It should make you spiritually rich, a person who loves whatever you're doing, wherever you are, whomever you are with. It should teach you what is important and how to live and how to die. Independent study, community service, adventures and experience, large doses of privacy and solitude, a thousand different apprenticeships, the one day variety or longer. These are all powerful, cheap and effective ways to start a real reform of schooling. But no large-scale reform is ever going to work to repair our damaged children and our damaged society until we force open the idea of school to include family as the main engine of education. If we use schooling to break children away from parents, and make no mistake, that has been the central function of schools since John Cotton announced it as the purpose of the Bay Colony Schools in 1650 and Horace Mann announced it as the purpose of Massachusetts schools in 1850, we're going to continue to have the horror show we have right now. That is also from John Taylor Gatto, dumbing us down. And there is a lovely little quote at the end here from George Carlin, don't just teach your children to read. Teach them to question what they read. Teach them to question everything. Even you. And it is infuriating sometimes when your children question you. Trust me. <laughs> Been there. Done that. But, yes. Ooh, ooh. Oh, poxified. I'm so sorry. Someone used the last of the TP. That's just rude. And yes, Kate, if students worked part time and paid their own way, I mean, cripes, I got a, I had a job all through school. So there you go. Hi, Moosey. And that student debt is just a bunch of trumped up bullshit. Trumped up bullshit. Oh, you read that before, Grimmy? Okay. Cool. Okay, let me see. Scientology! Whee! Yeah, Scientology's always fun, too. Scientology's freaking scary. Man, and their representatives? Oy! <laughs> I mean, seriously? John Travolta and Tom Cruise? <laughs> kind of scary. Kind of scary. Them boys are a little on the off-kilter side. Okay. Um, <laughs> there, we'll do this one. Once you abdicate your responsibility of teaching your own children what is important, you know, like playing in the dirt, learning to grow your own food, that kind of stuff, how to repair things on the house or around the house. Those are, those are things that you will be able to use the rest of your life. But, yeah. There's entirely, oh, signs of light. How cool. Hi, signs of light. Over here on mines. Okay, 
Let's see. Where? Where? Oh, where? Are you eating that? Hmm. Okay. I don't know that I want to go there. I'm going to go back to my pocket. I pulled a few things up, but I don't know that I really want to. Okay. Let's see. Um. Oh, that's circle saying. Okay, we'll check this one out. And then I'm also going to, while that is pulling up, Let's see. There we go. In the beginning. I'm going to find Damien James as well. Um, and I think this may be his most recent one. If it is, I think I've already done it. Mm-hmm. Yep. That one was from May of last year. I don't see... And that was from May of last year. Well, Damien, where have you been, my dear? I enjoy reading your blogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Apparently, fake news is the last one that he did. Huh. 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 Okay. Well, I will go back to this one then. Okay. This is from um, jamesfetzer.blogspot.com. Fooling American masses with fal false flag terror is no longer easy. Imagine that. Even though the ruling cabal controls the six major mass media, it is no longer easy for the ruling cabal to fool the American people with their staged, engineered, false flag terror attacks. We now know for certain that the ruling cabal has been using USG and its secret factions in various agencies like DHS, FEMA, the FBI, the CIA, and foreign groups like the Mossad, DVD, and other subcontractors to repeatedly engineer and stage Gladio-style false flag attacks. More and more, these cabal-ordered USG-run false flag attacks are now being exposed for what they actually are, inside job attacks on we, the people and they're being deployed in order to convince we, the people, to give up more constitutional rights, especially the right to bear arms, in exchange for promises of increased safety from terror. Yeah, how, do you, how are you going to have safety from terror when the ones that are proposing that you do these things are the ones causing the terror in the first place? That's, that's, that's always that little glitch that I see. Um, oh, B, quit. See ya, B. Yeah, plumbing, welding, electrical, HVAC, trade schools. Yeah. But see, nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that. Oh, well. Um, the first re uh, recorded use of false flag terror occurred in the 1700s with naval vessels of competing nations where one navy would set up a renegade ship, flag it with their enemy's flag, and make an attack on one of their own navy's ships. This provided a means to wrongly blame an enemy who did not attack and was used to justify attacking that enemy or go to war with that enemy. 
This technique was used by the Nazis in uh, Germany where they dressed up like Polish soldiers and attacked the German radio station and used it as an excuse to invade Poland and start World War II. It was also used by the Nazis to burn down the Reichstag and blame it on the Russians and institute gun control and other anti-terror measures such as the Nazi Enabling Act. Yay! Now the reason that these numerous false flag terror incidents deployed are being exposed for what they really are more and more every day to an increasing number of Americans is because of the emergence and common use of the worldwide internet. Every day more and more folks are going to alternative media sites as a source of current news and truth. In Instead of watching or listening to the six network major mass media news. So as the masses increasingly use the internet, alternative media websites, the number of users of the six major mass media decreases proportionately. Now as this downward spiral of less use of the major mass media increases daily, the ruling cabal that controls the internet through certain USG and foreign intel agencies has begun instituting blatant means to demonetize alt media websites and authors, restrict searches, and censor alt media posts. Numerous alt media websites are being attacked and having content removed illegally. Much of this new web censorship is being done secretly by use of national security letters, which are signed intelligence or which are signed intelligence findings that are delivered to the web service operator who is allowed to read or to read such but cannot keep it and will be threatened with a ten thousand dollar fine and ten years in jail if they disclose the order. Many alt media authors are now collaborating to set up their own alternative networks to thwart this censorship. The internet has become the Achilles heel of the ruling cabal, which has been um, empowered by a private worldwide central fiat banking, which allowed it to establish a stranglehold on America and most of the world this last 100 years. The ruling cabal has fully supported the concept of the worldwide internet because it was sold to them by DARPA and American Intel as the greatest surveillance and mind control uh, tool ever devised. To a certain degree this is held true. However, what was not anticipated was that the internet would quickly become a powerful force of education of the masses of ruling cabal crimes and the crimes of their henchmen across various intel agencies and subcontractors who they use to do their dirty work including many harassments and murders. Nor was it expected that the internet would result in the emergence of the new and powerful populism in America. The speed of light transmission of information about the ruling cabal's massive crimes against Americans and much of the world by uh, deployment of USG's intel agencies and the US military has created a rapid emergence of populism in the American people and much of the Western world. And this new and massive populism is now based on leaked, reported extensive knowledge of the ruling cabal's deployed covert actions by those individual agents who were cho who were close to them and never accepted such evil actions. In the last several years, many former U.S. intel agents have leaked massive amounts of illegal acts by the various agencies they worked for. These illegal acts leaked are acts leaked are a wide variety of crimes against humanity and violations of the U.S. Constitution, international law, the laws of many other nations, and include murder, mass murder, promotion of pedophilia and Satanism, targeting of dissidents, 
and numerous types of human compromise crimes. It's now obvious that most U.S. intel agencies and those other G7 ones they share operations and immunity with are functioning inside U.S. as a large RICO crime syndicate run by the ruling cabal that hijacked America in 1913 with the illegal passage of the Unconstitutional Federal Reserve Act. Powerful renegade factions deep inside certain unacknowledged secret space war programs have emerged. Folks with full access to all NSA collected secrets and these folks have leaked massive disclosures through the internet by multiple sources to make certain the ruling cabal, cabal would be displaced and brought to its knees. The internet quickly has become the world's new Gutenberg press and is producing a new powerful mass populism in America. Actually, um, the Gutenberg Press was revolutionary and made mass-produced printed materials available by the invention of resettable typeset. This new revolutionary development allowed the mass printing of the Bible, which gelded the Vatican back as soon as the education classes began to read the scripture and discovered that the Vatican did not follow it but had created church tradition to support bad policies. False flags are always the result of fascist regime at work. And the successful deployment of false flag attacks is ipso fact complete evidence that a nation is technically a state of fascism. The government has merged with the largest most powerful corporations. In America right now we have a state of super fascism which is the merger of the corporation and the state with the corporations stacking the USG to perform as their puppets. The history of World War II has shown us all that fascist regimes are always set up and controlled by the ruling cabal which runs the private central fiat central banking system. Seasoned investigators have labeled this ruling cabal as a cult and satanic based filled with pedophiles and child sacrificers and best described as world Zionists run out of the city of London. It's a separate one or it's a separate one square mile nation with its own police force and diplomats. Note the top world Zionist ruling cabal controls the policy makers carrying no Hebrew blood but our old black European nobility. I did not know that. False flags cannot be effectively deployed unless the ma uh, major mass media intel and law enforcement are controlled. So in order for the public to be effectively bamboozled into believing the governments aka the perps false narratives in the major mass media that always accompany these false flag attacks that fascist government must have gained control over the existing major mass media, intel, and law enforcement. In America, this has classically, classically been quite easy for them to accomplish because the major mass media has been consolidated into six major international media corporations and functions as the illegal news monopoly. Under, this is under antitrust laws and it's best described as a news cartel. And since the Roswell incident in 1947, national security was initially imposed on the USA to protect the alien ET slash UFO slash anti-gravity secrets, but since has become expanded to be used as a false cover for all the sins, evils, and crimes of the ruling cabal and its agents in the major mass media, intel, law enforcement, and USG agencies. In America, the six major mass media have been trans transformed after 1947 into CIA pro uh, 
proprietaries that function in lockstep for the ruling cabal through official USG spokespersons. These media spokespersons are personally controlled by the CIA directly or indirectly. So whenever the government slash major mass media complexes false narratives about their false flag terror attacks start being rejected by a growing portion of the populace, this means that the fascist regime behind such attacks is being seriously challenged. And that is precisely what is happening now in America, thanks to the Internet, which is the new Gutenberg Press. The new Gutenberg Press is a strong neutralizer of the ruling cabal's false narratives about their engineered and staged false flag terror attacks. And this works to erode USG fascism. Despite all the differences and disagreements that have at times arisen between different internet alternative media websites that are exposing these false flag terror attacks for what they really are, Gladio-style government actions designed to extract more power and rights from the masses, their collective product has been de to degrade and neutralize the false narratives of the false flag perps in various USG agencies. And some of the alternative media internet websites fully expose these USG false flags and are viewed by other less radical less well-informed alt websites as too radical, occasionally accusing these full exposures of being limited hangout cabal agents. Could be. Usually cabal apologists and their cover-up artists are hidden among the limited hangout type alt media internet websites. The cabal's financing, use and protection of some alt media limited hangout websites, actually has failed in its goal of neutralizing the Internet's massive disclosures of their dirty secrets. So why is this so? Because many of the alt media website users have become so knowledgeable and sophisticated that they will pick and choose truth nuggets from these limited hangout websites while rejecting their conclusions as bad payloads. Yes. I know, I like it too, Grimmy. Oh. Um, there's a growing number of sophisticated alt media website users that take the truth nuggets from each website that resonate with their current mindset and then draw their own conclusions. Even if alt media website users disagree on whether anybody died or not at the latest mass shooting in Parkland, Florida, most now agree that this incident and most others like it are cabal engineered and staged Gladio style false flag attacks. These may differ with some thinking these false flags used either MK Ultra mind controlled or Sirhan Sirhan types patsies or multiple shooters and had real dead victims. Others who know their engineered and staged false flags may believe that large numbers of crisis actors were used. Fake stage blood and faked events were deployed to fool the public and nobody was actually murdered or even shot. But the bottom line there is more basic agreement than disagreement that all of these events in some way are USG engineered and staged inside job Gladio style false flag attacks on we the people. It is known by insiders that police involved in many of such matters have seen national security with threats of prosecution, sometimes lethal threats, imposed to prevent them from telling what they know and the release of any forensic evidence or crime scene videos or photos. It's also known beyond any shadow of a doubt that crisis actors have been hired in advance for many of these false flag events. Advertising for such has been recovered and faces of some 
different false flag match um, showing the same actors used more than once sometimes. It's also known for a fact that many of these crisis events have had DHS slash FEMA live shooter drills scheduled for that same day or right before. So the conclusion is, even with the numerous differences, various alt media website users have about the unfolding of these mass crisis events and whether folks really died or not, most are getting hip to the fact that all of these are engineered and staged USG related false flag terror attacks. Let me emphasize what will happen if we ever see the day that our state and federal governments start enforcing the numerous laws already on the books for terrorism and taking on the ruling cabal and their engineered staged false flag synthetic terror attacks. Hundreds of U.S. officials elected and appointed in various USG agencies, both intel and law enforcement, will be going to jail for life. Why? Because the deployment and cover-up of false flag terror is major felony crime. It violates numerous federal and state laws according to RICO criminal and or including RICO criminal and civil. And this is from James or Preston James PhD. He is a social psychologist with a doctorate from major Midwest Big Ten University, retired after serving the community for over 36 years, during which time there were numerous contacts with those associated with intel and law enforcement. So, thank you, sir. That was rather long and drawn out, but very, very informative. And actually made me feel a little bit better about, because, you know, I see some of that stuff, but I'm out here in the boonie, and I'm around people that really don't, don't, you know, fall for a lot of the bullshit anymore. You know, it's like, they're, they're those, I got to see this shit in order to truly believe it. You know, there's a lot of people out here that just go, nah, ain't falling for it. Or them, them city folk. You know, that's a lot of the attitude out here as well. So, it's nice to see. You know, it's it, preach to my choir. Let's put it that way. That was, that was a good news one. I like that one. So, now, wow, I only have a half an hour left. I think it's about time I get over to the pig, see what those boys are up to. See what happened this date in history, at least. Okay, what's that? <laughs> okay, I got to give you guys a pick of the day. It really is pretty cute. Although, uh, no, it's kind of a circular logic kind of thing. But no, i sorry, guys, because I've... Yeah, you got to blame it on the parents as well. But yeah, what you're feeding ain't exactly... Oh, well. Word of the day is swamp. It's a cesspool on the Potomac populated by the very dregs of humanity whose goal is the enslavement of we the people. In their quotable quotes section, Diplomacy is the art of telling people to go to hell in such a way that they ask for directions. That's from Winston Her um, Churchill. And you know what? I have been told to go there so many times that I am now the official tour guide. I can, I can tell you multiple ways of how to get there. <laughs> Okay, in their tasty tidbits today, in case you may have missed it, a religious studies major was booted out of the Christianity class at Indiana University, or yeah, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, because he had the effrontery to point out to Professor Allison da uh, Downey that contrary to her opinion, there are only two genders. Oh, my. Making the wicket extra sticky is that the male student, Lake Ingle, 
needs to complete the class in order to graduate at the end of the semester. But Professor Downey justified his expulsion by claiming that he was guilty of disrupting her class when he was um, guilt or when all he was guilty of was upsetting her politically correct apple cart. There are three questions that pop to mind. One, just how easy is it to become a professor these days, and maybe I should look into it. Two, why the heck is this autocratic cretin conducting a class in something as absurd as Christian feminist theology? And three, what possessed young Mr. Engel to sign up for a class called Christian feminist theology? If he was looking to meet girls, I would have advised him to spend time near the organic vegetable section at the local supermarket, or that he look into borrowing a friend's dog. That's from Bert Prolitsky. Thank you, Bert. I did not know that. Hmm. Oh, hey. And from cnsnews.com, top 10 states with lowest tax on beer. According to the Tax Foundation's New Facts and Figures report for 2018, Wyoming has the lowest state excise tax on beer at only 2 cents per gallon. The state with the highest excise tax on beer is Tennessee at 1.29 cents per gallon. So, as presented by the Tax Foundation, the top 10 states with the lowest excise tax on beer are as follows. Number 1, Wyoming with, point zero two, uh, with 2 cents per gallon. Uh, Missouri with 6 cents per gallon. Wisconsin, 6 cents per gallon. Colorado, 8 cents per gallon. Pennsylvania, 8 cents per gallon. Oregon, 8 cents per gallon. Massachusetts, 11 cents per gallon. Indiana, 12 cents. New Jersey, 12 cents. And Rhode Island, 12 cents. Now, the top 10 states and D.C. with the highest excise taxes on beer, dollars per gallon, are as follows. Tennessee is $1.29. Alaska is $1.07. Alabama is $1.05. Georgia, a dollar and a penny. Hawaii, 93 cents. Kentucky, 85 cents. South Carolina, 77 cents. District of Columbia, 70 cents. Maryland, 53 cents. And Minnesota, 49 cents. So, damn it. There you go. Um, now, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling down to this date in history. So, the 23rd of March, 1952, suckage on ice ensues when with a 6-2 lead and 14 minutes to go, New York Rangers gives up three goals in 21 seconds and goes on to lose the game 7-6 to the Chicago Blackhawks. Damn. And this date in history, the 23rd of March, 1972, motorcycle wrangling daredevil Evil Knievel jumps over 35 cars, calls the jump a success from hospital bed with 93 broken bones during the jump. There you go. Isn't that just wonderful? So... Um, checking out his his rant for the day too Oop. if you guys want to come on over to pigazette.com say hey to Hambo and Porkus tell them Grammy sent you they'll go oh shit yeah cripes that crazy woman yeah they know me <laughs> I don't know that they brag about it but they know me what No, Moosey, I'm not starting at a new time. It's just today I had to go on a rescue run. <laughs> Somebody was driving a Ford found on road dead. <laughs> and I had to go out in the middle of the frickin' boonies, which I was told that it really wasn't too much uh, farther from where I had to go and pick him up. Uh, you could find bumfucked Egypt. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, trust no one. What is that? Let me see what that is. Your pet rule. Yes, my pet rules. My pet rules. My pets rule my house. They pretty much let me know. Damn it all. Okay. Oh, matter of finding your niche. Oh, how fun, free enslaved. You're finding it. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, Grim. Yeah, it is really messing with your between show free time. And you know what? I'm going to be uh, late getting my blog stuff done, too, because somebody's going to take me out for supper. <laughs> That's just part of the repayment. By gosh and by golly. Okay, I'm going to go back to my pocket. Um, let me see. No, that was from January. That's from... What? I'm I'm still checking out my Damien James thing and it's like what the hell? What the hell? I'm not finding any of his new stuff. Damn it. Okay. Um back to my regular pocket. Did I do the one about the Harvard immunologist? I don't remember if I did that one or not, or if I just thought about doing it. Hmm. Let me, let me do a scroll. God, I got a lot of things opened up. I don't think I did. Nope, it's an open letter. Okay. See if I can end on a perky note. This is from, oh hey. No, that's dated March 23rd. Because I've had this in my pocket a few days. So, this is from healthimpactnews.com. And, um, Harvard immunologist to legislators, unvaccinated children pose zero risk to anyone. It's an open letter to legislators currently considering vaccine legislation from Tatiana Abukhenit. Abu Henik, yeah, PhD. Um, dear legislator, my name is Tatiana. I'm not going to try and butcher that last name again. I hold a PhD in immunology, and I'm writing this letter in the hope that it will correct several common misconceptions about vaccines in order to help you formulate a fair and balanced understanding that is supported by accepted vaccine theory and new scientific findings. So, do unvaccinated children pose a higher threat to the public than the vaccinated? It is often stated that those who choose not to vaccinate their children for reasons of conscience and um, endang conscience endanger the rest. Oh, okay. For reasons of conscience, endanger the rest of the public. She needs a comma there. Um, and this is the rationale behind most of the legislation to end vaccine exemptions currently being considered by federal and state legislators uh, countrywide. You should be aware that the nature of protection afforded by many modern vaccines, and that includes most of the vaccines recommended by the CDC for children, is not consistent with such a statement. I have outlined below the recommended vaccines that cannot prevent transmission of disease, either because they are not designed to prevent the transmission of infection, rather they are intended to prevent disease symptoms, or because they are for non-communicable diseases. People who have not received the vaccines mentioned below pose no higher threat to the general public than those who have implying that discrimination against non-immunized children in the public school setting may not be warranted. Number one, IPV, or the inactivated poliovirus vaccine, cannot prevent transmission of poliovirus. 
Wild polio virus has been non-existent in the U.S. for at least two decades. Even if wild polio virus were to be re-imported by travel, vaccinating for polio with IPV cannot affect the safety of public spaces. Please note that wild polio virus eradication is attributed to the use of a different vaccine, OPV or oral polio virus vaccine. Despite being capable of preventing wild polio vaccine transmission, use of OPV was phased out long ago in the U.S. and replaced with IPV due to safety concerns. Number two, tetanus is not a contagious disease, but rather acquired from deep puncture wounds contaminated with C. tetan. Uh, see tetany spores and vaccinating for tetanus via the DP or DT or DTAP combination vaccine cannot alter the safety of public spaces. It is intended to render personal protection only. Um, and it's really not necessary if you have a healthy immune system. That's from Dr. John Bergman. Um, Number three, while intended to prevent a disease-causing effects of diphtheria toxin, the diphtheria toxoid vaccine, also contained in the DTaP vaccine, is not designed to prevent colonization and transmission of C. diphtheriae. Vaccinating with dip or for diphtheria cannot alter the safety of public spaces. It is likewise intended for personal protection only. Number four, acellular pertussis, ah, per, the per, AP or vaccine, the final element of the DTaP com, combined vaccine now in use in the U.S. replaced the whole cell pertussis vaccine in the late 1990s, which was followed by an unprecedented resurgence of whooping cough. An experiment with deliberate pertussis infection in primates revealed that a AP vaccine is not capable of preventing colonization and transmission of B pertussis. The FDA has issued a warning regarding this crucial finding. Furthermore, the 2013 meeting of the Board of Scientific Counselors at the CDC revealed additional alarming data that pertussis variants or PRN negative strains currently circulating in the USA acquired a selective advantage to in infect those who are up to date on their boosters, meaning that people who are up to date are more likely to be infected and thus contagious than people who are not vaccinated. Now, number five, among numerous types of H influenza, the Hib vaccine covers only type B. Despite its sole intent to reduce the symptomatic and asymptomatic diseaseless Hib carriage, the introduction of the Hib vaccine was inadvertently shifted strain dominance towards other types of H influenza, types A through F. These types have been causing invasive disease of high severity and increasing incidence of a, in adults in the era of Hib vaccination of children. Um, the general population is more vulnerable to the invasive disease now, now than it was prior to the start of the Hib vaccination campaign. Discriminating against children who are not vaccinated for Hib does not make any scientific sense in the era of non-type B H influenza disease. In other words, the flu shot. That's what influenza is. The flu shot don't work. Number six, hepatitis B is a blood-borne virus. It does not spread in a community setting, especially among children who are unlikely to engage in high-risk behaviors, such as needle sharing or sex. Vaccinating children for hepatitis B cannot significantly alter the safety of public spaces. Further, school admission is not prohibited for children who are chronic hepatitis B carriers. To prohibit school admission for those who are simply unvaccinated and do not even carry hepatitis B would constitute unreasonable and illogical discrimination. 
In summary, a person who is not vaccinated with IPV, DTaP, Hep B, and Hib vaccines due to reasons of conscience who pose no extra danger to the public than a person who is no who is not. No discrimination is warranted. So, it is often stated that vac vaccination rarely leads to serious adverse events. Unfortunately, this statement is not supported by science. A recent study done in Ontario, Canada established that vaccination actually leads to an emergency room visit for 1 in 168 children following their 12-month vaccination appointment and 1 in 730 children following their 18-month vaccination appointment. When the risk of an adverse event requiring an ER visit after well baby vaccination is demonstrably so high, vaccination must remain a choice for parents who may understandably be unwilling to assume this immediate risk in order to protect their child from diseases that are generally considered mild or that their child may never be exposed to. So, can discrimination against families who oppose vaccines for reasons of conscience prevent future disease outbreaks of communicable viral diseases such as measles? Well, measles research scientists have a long time been aware of the measles paradox. I quote from the article by Poland and Jacobson in 1994, Failure to reach a goal of measles elimination, apparent paradox of measles infections in immunized persons. The apparent paradox is that as measles immunization rates rise to high levels in a population, measles becomes a disease of immunized persons. Further research determined that behind the measles paradox is a fraction of the population called low vaccine responders. The low, res uh, low responders are those who respond poorly to the first dose of the measles vaccine. These individuals then mount a weak immune response to subsequent revaccination and quickly t return to the pool of susceptible within two to five years, despite being fully vaccinated. Revaccination cannot correct low responsiveness. It appears to be an immunogenetic trait. The portion of low responders among children was estimated to be 4.7% in the USA. Studies of measles outbreaks in Quebec, Canada and China attest that outbreaks of measles still happen, even when vaccination compliance is in the highest bracket. 95 to 97% or even 99%. And this is because even in high vaccine responders, vaccine induced antibodies wane over time. Vaccine immunity does not equal lifelong immunity acquired after natural exposure. It has been documented that vaccinated people who develop breakthrough measles are contagious. In fact, two major measles outbreaks in 2011 in Quebec, Canada and New York, New York were re-imported by previously vaccinated individuals. So taken together, these data make it apparent that elimination of vaccine exemptions currently only utilized by a small percentage of families anyway will neither solve the problem of disease resurgent nor prevent Reimportation and outbreak of previously eliminated diseases. Is discrimination against conscientious vaccine objectors the only practical solution? Well, the majority of measles cases in recent U.S. outbreaks, including the recent Disneyland outbreak, are adults and very young babies, whereas in the pre vaccination era, measles occurred mainly between ages 1 and 15. Natural exposure to measles was followed by lifelong immunity from reinfection, whereas vaccine immunity wanes over time, leaving adults unprotected by their childhood shots. Measles is more dangerous for infants and for adults than for school-aged children. 
Despite high chances of exposure in the pre-vaccination era, measles practically never happened in babies much younger than a year of age due to the robust maternity or maternal immunity transfer mechanism, a.k.a. nursing your child and giving the child some of mother's natural antibodies. The vulnerability of very young babies to measles today is the direct outcome of the prolonged mass vaccination campaign of the past, during which their mothers themselves vaccinated in their childhood were not able to experience measles naturally at a safe school age and establish a lifelong immunity that would also be transferred to their babies and protect them from measles for the first year of life. Luckily, a therapeutic backup exists to mimic now eroded maternal immunity. Infants as well as other vulnerable or non-immunocompromised um, individuals are eligible to receive immunoglobulin, globulin, which is a potentially life-saving measure that supplies antibodies directly against the virus to prevent the disease upon exposure. So in summary, I'm gonna go, I might go a little long. Uh, number one, due to the properties of modern vaccines, non-vaccinated individuals pose no greater risk of transmission of polio, diphtheria, pertussis, and numerous non-type B H influenza strains than vaccinated individuals do. And non-vaccinated individuals pose virtually no danger of transmission of hepatitis B in a school setting. And tetanus is not transmittable at all. Number two, there is a significantly elevated risk of emergency room visits after childhood vaccination appointments attesting that vaccination is not risk-free. Number three, outbreaks of measles cannot be entirely prevented even if we had nearly perfect vaccination compliance. And number four, an effective method of preventing measles and other viral diseases in vaccine ineligible infants and the immunocompromised immunoglobulin is available for those who may be exposed to these diseases. Taken together, these four facts make it clear that discrimination in public school settings against children who are not vaccinated for reasons of conscience is completely unwarranted as the vaccine status of conscious objectors poses no undue risk to the public. Sincerely yours, Tatiana Obbledy Wadi Wadi Sorry, hun. Don't want to bugger up your name worse. So, there you go. We got science. Even real science. Oh no, I'm still here. I didn't go away. Huh. I didn't think I went away. It shows I've been streaming. Oh well. Maybe somebody's buggering with my stream. Maybe that's what it is. Oh well, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com channel 3. Also on the RLM Radio.xyz site, the RLM Spreaker channel, and later to be on the RLM YouTube channel. Be sure to stick around because Grimmy and Moose Girl will be on later on this evening for the Freaker's Ball. And then I will be back in the morning. Well, morning for me. Um to do the freakers or not do the dork table with flash or rooney dork but until then y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening and uh, i need to go and get cleaned up because i got a dinner date <laughs> i will get my blog done when i get back grimmy so yeah oh you just lost signal for a bit oh sorry about that i my stuff doesn't show that it went away but that doesn't mean nothing hey Maybe it's the cabal that's messing with me. Maybe I laughed at him too much. You think? I don't think so. Oh, well. Let's see. Six other, six plants other than cannabis that are high in cannabinoids. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. There you go. Thank you, cowboy. I need that. Um. <laughs> 
Yeah, gas chair chowders. That's most definitely what it is. Oh, well. Thanks, y'all, and have an absolutely amazing evening, and I will catch up with you later after I get something put in my tummy tum tum. So, I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night.